Let's now look at the concept of data types. We've already touched on this issue of data types because we've spoken about integers and we've also spoken about strings, which are actual data types when we were explaining the concept of variables. So data types, uh, as it states, it, it's very important for you to understand these different data types that you, that you have. Because when you create variables, variables can be of type integers, they can be of type strings. These are all different data types that you are working with. And when you have different data types, you can do different things. So when I have integers, for example, when I have integers, I can perform calculations. When I have strings, these can be in the form of names. These can be in the form of addresses. And with strings, you will see as we go through the duration of the course, we can do many different functions with strings. So for now, let's just understand strings to contain things that have words and letters. And strings can even contain numbers, as we'll see just now. But the point being is that when you have different data types, you can do different things with them. So Python has many different uh, data types, but we are going to focus on just these four. The one data type is str, and str refers to strings. So these are strings. And you will, you will now know that when we refer to strings, strings are anything that are between quotes, either double quotes or single quotes. That is considered a string. So that's for text. Whenever you have text data types, those are strings. Now, if you're working with numeric data types, numeric means numbers. Now, there are two types of numbers that you get. You can get integers. Integers refer to numbers that don't have a decimal point in it. So you could have 10, that's an integer. You could have zero. You could have minus 10, which is negative, but it is still an integer value. So these are different types of integers. They don't have a point in it. You also get float. Float is now a number that has a point in it. For example, 10.5. So this is a float. You could have um, 20.3. That is also a float. Or you could have 10.0. Because I've got the point zero, that turns the number 10 into a float. If you look at this number here, 10, and if you look at the number 10.0, it's the same number 10. But to the computer, this number is seen as an integer value, whilst that number, because of the point zero, it is seen as a float. Um, and these floats, another name we sometimes use for it, are real numbers. Real numbers are numbers that contain a point in it. And then the last data type that I will just touch through is Boolean. Uh, and when we refer to it, we refer to it as bool. And Boolean basically is a data type that has a value of either true or it has the value false. At the very beginning stage, we won't use Boolean that much. But just for now, you should have an understanding that when you have a data type of type boolean or bool, that the values that they take on will be either true or the value will be false. Let's now look at setting the data type and how we use the assignment operator. So this is the assignment. Assignment means equals. And it means we take the value this is like an equation. And we take the value on the right-hand side. This is the right-hand side. And we store it in the variable on the left-hand side. 
So your left-hand side will always have a variable. The left-hand side must contain a variable. The right-hand side, on the other hand, it can have a number, just a number, a single number. The right-hand side could contain another variable. Or the right-hand side can contain an expression. In other words, it can be made up of variables and numbers to form an expression. So we will see different examples of where we have expressions. So this is our, this is how the assignment works. We have something on the right hand side and it's stored on the left hand side. So in this first example, you will see that we've got the variable on the left hand side. Remember we said the variable must have a, the left hand side must have a variable. And we have that, we're calling it X. And we are storing a value on the right hand side, which is hello world, it's a string. So maybe I can add here as well, it could be a string on the right hand side. So the, the value that we are storing into this variable, Python will now see it as a string variable. If you look at y, we are storing just a single number. So y is 20. And Python will then interpret that and it will understand that y is an integer variable. In this case of z, we've got 20.5. So in this instance, Python will now know that because I've got the point, that particular variable will be a float. So we can also have a variable called num, and we could say num equals uh, 10 plus or times, 10 times five plus, and we can have plus y. So this is an expression. An expression is where it's going to do some form of a calculation. So the expression is evaluated, you get an answer, and that answer is stored in the variable num. And the data type will be dependent on whatever the result is. If this expression has a point in it, then num will be a float data type. But if it does not have any point and it's just a number, a whole number, uh, then this will be an integer. Let's look at some other cases. Um, here we're just taking the value 10, storing it in X. We're taking 20.5, storing it in Y. And then here we've got an expression. This is an accumulator because we are taking the value of X on both sides. We're taking the current value of X. In this case, X is currently 10. 10 plus one is 11. So the new value of X will be 11. And in this instance, Y equals Y, that's an accumulator plus 10. So what's the current value of Y? The current value of Y is 20.5. So 20.5 will give you 30.5. So the value of Y will be 30.5. So when I print X, that is going to print 11. And when I print Y, it's going to print 30.5. If we're working with strings, we've got print, hello, print hello. All that this is happening is it's going to print hello twice. And we know that we can use double quotes or single quotes. So your output here, if this was my output screen, it's going to display hello. And on the next line, it's also going to display hello. The next segment, we store the string in a variable and then we're printing the variable. So that will just simply, if I print A, it's going to print the value hello. And that's going to be displayed once. If we look at this particular segment, we've got hello in A and world in B. 
and C is adding A plus B, and we print C. So A, A is hello, B is world, so when I, and that's stored in C. So this is going to print hello, leave a space, and it's going to print world. And this space is coming from the space that we left there in B. If you don't leave a space, then the O and the W are going to be right next to each other when it is combined. Then if we look at this segment, this is interesting. This is an interesting segment. Um, can we do this? Can we put uh, numbers and make them and put quotes around them and treat them as a string? The answer is yes. Numbers can be strings. That's an important point to take note of. Numbers can be strings. So if we have A equals 10, but remember it has quotes, so A is a string, B equals 20, which is also a string, and now I'm trying to add A plus B. So if you had to guess what answer it's going to output, you probably would say, well, 10 plus, 10 plus 20 is 30. So it should display the answer 30, but that's not the case. Because you have strings, these variables A and B are strings. When you attempt to add strings, what the computer does is it takes the string, adding it means it just puts them together. So I've got A, which is 10, so there's the 10, plus B, which is 20, so it puts it together and it form and it's going to give you an output of 1020 because they are strings. So the point to take note of here is that when you have numbers and they are in the form of strings, you will not be able to perform calculations. So if you want these, these variables A and B and they have numbers and you want to perform calculations, then we have to do conversions. We have to do a conversion to make the string into an integer, which you will learn in a short while. So the point to take out of the, this is when you're working with strings and if they are numbers, you cannot do calculations in the way we normally do calculations, because all that it will do, if you use the plus, it will put them together. And if you attempt to use a minus, it will result in an error. You cannot use minus for subtraction, and you cannot do division, and you cannot do multiplication. But if you attempt to do addition, it joins the two strings together.